Cleveland Terrapins come in to take on the West Virginia Mountaineers. The blue and gold onto the field for the first time this afternoon. A crowd in excess of 55,000 is expected. And Don Garcia, a great deal of excitement has been generated by this team as a result of last week's performance at Pitt. Coaches are very satisfied with the performance uh, at the Pitt game, Tony, particularly West Virginia Mountaineers went out and out hit the Panthers, intimidated them with the big hits defensively, and the front line blocking offensively. Just a great day for the Mountaineers. Can they carry that momentum from the Pitt game to Maryland? Special presentation being made now. Here comes James Jett, the last man out of the tunnel, but the fastest of the Mountaineers. He's being honored this afternoon for winning a gold medal at this summer's Olympic Games as part of the United States 4x100 meter relay team. And he's being honored here by fans and by his teammates. In fact, he was the subject of the cover story on the game day program and a beautiful shot of him on the cover with that treasured gold medal. Just an offensive weapon, Tony. Not only uh, his track exploits, but what he's done in the football field. This afternoon, James Jett and the Mountaineers will try to knock off the Maryland Terrapins for the second straight year. We invite you to stay tuned for the kickoff. Today's game is brought to you by Budweiser, the king of beers. The only beer with the taste as genuine as the people who drink it. Nothing beats a bud. United National Bank. We're united with the Mountaineers. CNP Telephone Yellow Pages. No other book can match it. A Bell Atlantic Company. Walker Machinery, your Caterpillar dealer with the best product support personnel on the road today. That's the Walker difference. Gatorade Thirst Quencher satisfies your thirst and puts back what you need. Gatorade, it's all you're thirsting for. Today's game will be the 30th meeting between these two border rivals, and this series through the years has been almost dead even. 14 victories for Maryland. The series actually began back in 1918, and these two teams have played each other every season since Don Nealon came on board at West Virginia. That was in 1980. And interestingly enough, the visiting team has come away with the win more often than not. In fact, four out of the last five meetings, the visitor has come up with the victory. For the Maryland Terrapins, a victory today would mark the very first victory under new coach Mark Duffner. They have come close in their first two games against a pair of top 25 teams, against Virginia and North Carolina State. And on the other side for Don Nealon, he'll be trying here today to knock off Maryland. If he does that, it will mark just the third time in his 13 seasons that the Mountaineers have been able to beat both Pitt and Maryland in the same season. It happened in 1983, it happened in 1988, the undefeated season, and they'll try to make it 1992 as well. Traditionally, Tony, this has always been a very, very physical contest, which of course, the exception being last year. Throughout the 80s, Maryland was always a very, very good football team, probably went to seven or eight bowl games uh, during that 10-year period. The man in the white shirt is Mark Duffner, the first-year head coach of the Terps, an outstanding record in the past six seasons at Holy Cross, he was 65 and one. He just did an excellent job with Holy Cross, and now he's stepped up to Division 1A and trying to engineer his first victory here today. Mountaineers kicking off. It is Todd Sauerbrunn, and a deep kick will not be returned. All the way out of the end zone, Todd Sauerbrunn did it last week. Almost left the Pitt Panthers without one return in the entire game. They finally were able to return one, but every other kick during last week's game against Pitt was in the end zone and not returned. John Kaleo is the quarterback for Maryland, a junior college transfer in his second season with the Terps. Mason, a very talented tailback. Wycheck, Badgett, Harris, and Inge, the receivers. You'll see a lot of them. On the front line, Ingram, the best Linemen at the left tackle spot, Arlene Dubas, Ron Staffolino, a native of West Virginia, and David Dunn. They show shotgun formation on the game's first play, and to no surprise, they'll put it up in the air, and it's nearly intercepted, and now it's caught by Richie Harris of Maryland. A four-yard pickup on what should have been an intercepted pass. Tommy Orr, the junior from Elizabeth, New Jersey, 
Maryland lining up in duels, two wide receivers on both sides, or makes just a, a great read on the out cut, just uh, can't find the handle. Second down and six. Now Kaleo rolls, and he has open field ahead. He's got the first down. Slipping down at the 39-yard line. Free safety David Mayfield came up to slap him down. A 14-yard pickup on the plate. Kaleo does not have a tremendous amount of running ability. However, he is more dangerous when he is allowed to get out on the perimeter and throw the ball, more so than when he just drops straight back and tries to throw it. The inside handoff, Mason hit and dropped back at the 36-yard line. Barry Hawkins, along with Tim Brown, there to make the stop for the Mountaineers. We should note that defensively for West Virginia, Steve Redd, the very talented down lineman, is out of this game and perhaps is out for the rest of the season. He was trying to come back from a ruptured Achilles tendon, and it just has been too sore for him. Doctors performed a test yesterday, an MRI, and uh, at least for the next four to five weeks, he's out, but it does not look good for Steve Redd. Pressure on Kaleo. Here is Marcus Badgett with the reception. Crosses over the 40-yard line. A five-yard pickup. Keith Morris, a down lineman, freshman out of Elizabeth, New Jersey, came over to make the stop on Marcus Badgett, who leads the team with 12 receptions. Kaleo lining up in the shotgun formation. We won't see the ball stretch down the field vertically too much today, Tony. Mostly a lot of out cuts throwing that ball, dinking that ball out in the flat areas. Confusion on the West Virginia side, and the Mountaineers are forced into calling an early timeout. That this, that's one thing that this hurry-up offense forces a defense to make substitutions and, and does create problems for a defense. Defensively for West Virginia, Tom Briggs had an incredible game a year ago against Maryland. Six tackles, two sacks, two tackles behind the line, two deflected passes, and a fumble recovery. He'll need another big game here today against the Terps. Hawkins, very solid. Rick Dolly coming back from that tender ankle. Boris Graham also needs a big game from a pass rushing perspective. The linebacker, Matt Tifoni, improves with every game. He's just a true sophomore. Wes Richardson back after that sprained knee that kept him out for most of last week against Pitt and Puppy Wright playing at the strong side linebacker spots, sharing time there with Derek Wiley. In the backfield, Kwame Smith, Mike Collins, David Mayfield, and we saw Tommy Orr on the game's first play nearly pick off a pass. And you talked briefly there about last year's contest. Mark Mason is a big time back, this tailback they have. Last year, 17 attempts, he only had 68 yards, his worst outing last year. So West Virginia, again, has to do a good job against Mason and the running game. Third down and call it six. Again, the shotgun formation. Kaleo has plenty of time. And incomplete. Just deflected away from Marcus Badgett. Leroy Axum, the senior defensive back, got a hand on it. And the Terrapins will be called on to punt. West Virginia playing good team defense. Keep Kaleo in the pocket. Don't let him scramble around. Get him in the pocket. Make him beat you with your arm. Good pass rush. Good secondary play. Michael Baker, who averaged 12 yards a return last week against Pitt, deep for the Mountaineers at the 14-yard line. Dave DeArmas averaging nearly 32 yards per punt. It will not be a return here. It takes a Maryland hop inside the 20-yard line. They'll mark it down at the 17. West Virginia will take it over. First down and 10 after a 40-yard punt. No score. Why is number 17 in the gold and blue? Jake Kelchner has reignited an interest in this Mountaineer team. The line, Braham, Styles, Compton, LeBlanc, and Edwards. Jake Kelchner is the quarterback. And on first down, the Mountaineers want to pass. Kelchner scrambling, breaks by one tackle, and is down to the 23-yard line. Seven yards on the pickup for the man they're calling Jake the Snake. A week ago, he was on against the Pitt Panthers, throwing a couple of touchdown passes. So far through two games, four touchdown throws. He's number three in the nation in passing efficiency. He, he's just a football player, Tony, and he does things that you can't coach. 
He gets in that huddle, his eyes are big. Those kids have a lot of confidence in him, and he just says things as a natural athlete. The best of the linemen there is number 91, Darren Drozdov. Had a great game last week against NC State. Here is Kelsner again. Looks at the pressure, now throws across. And the ball is there for the first down. Rodney Woodard, the fullback out of Columbia, South Carolina, hauls in his fifth reception of the season. That's a pickup of four yards, and they'll move the sticks. Again, Kelsner, that maturity in, in only two or three games underneath his belt, standing in the pocket, starts to feel a little bit of pressure, scrambles out, and has a nice touch on the ball. Woodard finds the open place in the secondary. John Kappa comes in along with James Jett. Adrian Morrell goes out. Now the play clock is down to six seconds as Kelchner steps up to the line. On first down and ten, they just get it off. Kelchner going for it all to Jett. He's got him. You won't see that happen often. James Jett being overthrown, but he just put a little bit too much on it. Again, Kelchner standing in the pocket tall. This guy can throw the ball 65 yards flat-footed, just barely off the handle there. So Jett takes a long sprint. See that number down there? He's caught two passes. They've both been for touchdowns so far this year. He's averaging 52 yards per catch going it'll, into it'll this It'll make game. that Maryland secondary a little softer, already throwing a deep threat to Jett this early. Option. This is Morrell. Fancy footwork. Give him 10 yards on the pickup. Darren Colvin, the outside linebacker, came over to get him. A year ago, Adrian Morrell had just a great game against the Terrapins. 141 yards and two touchdowns, and he starts off strong. Morrell, an elusive runner. Look at that, a little hip action. But just think if you're, you're that free safety in that Maryland secondary. They just threw a bomb, so you're thinking a little bit soft. All of a sudden, they throw the option, and you've got to get up there and fill that. Presents problems for defensive football teams. Option again, this time to the left. Down to the 46-yard line. Six more yards for Adrian Morrell. Right cornerback Mike Lacey chased him out. So far, Mike Jarmalowicz the talented linebacker for the Terrapins has been taken out of the play. Wow. Eddie Hill coming back on a crack back right in the middle linebacker's soup coolers, baby. That's the way you block as a wide receiver. Morrell will take a rest. John Jones is in a tailback for West Virginia. The fullback is Woodard. He'll be stopped short of the first down by about a yard. As a middle linebacker, Tony, when you get blocked like that, I can guarantee you the next play, your eyes go right to that receiver, and it does cause problems. Rodney Woodard, who is considered a recruiting steal for the Mountaineers, they took him right out of the heart of the Gamecocks. South Carolina is a native of Columbia. He was a state player of the year as a senior, and he's really been an impressive force for the Mountaineers so far at fullback. They go to him again, Second effort looks as though will be enough for the first down. Jim Panagos, the junior nose guard out of Islip Terrace, New York, got a hold of him, but Woodard was able to push ahead for the first down. You know, Woodard, 230 pounds, six foot, bench press is 485. That's where that strength, that third and short, when you have a fullback who can just punch it up in there for that short yardage and get you to the first down, that's why he's so valuable to this football team. Mountaineers now two for two on third down. They put three first downs together on this, their opening possession. The option look, penalty marker down. Kelchner going deep for Michael Baker. There's contact. No flag down after the contact, but there is a penalty marker down back at the line of scrimmage. surprised that we didn't see a penalty marker down there John with the contact well I believe it was incidental Tony on the break preliminary signal is offsides against Maryland and so the Mountaineers had a free play and they went for it all you know this Maryland defense is hurting they lost six or seven good solid football players because of graduation and uh, they're feeling the pain of it right now 
with the penalty, West Virginia moves into Maryland territory for the first time this afternoon. On the delay, it's Morrell. Gene Gray, the inside linebacker, did a nice job in bringing down Morrell after a two-yard pickup. Interior blocking a key for West Virginia. Mike Compton, the Lombardi Award semifinalist, takes on Mike Jarmolowicz. And it was Gray who was able to come up and make the stop. You know, Compton, Tony, he's, he's 6'7", 289, has excellent feet. You just don't see that many centers who are that big who can uh, peel off on a linebacker like that. He's got a big career ahead of him. Inside handoff again. The fullback, Rodney Woodard, gets the call, and he'll bring it ahead to the 40-yard line. That'll bring up third down and less than a yard. You'll see Maryland play today defensively, a version of the wide tackle six, uh, very similar to Vince Dooley's wide tackle six back in the early 80s. Remember the bald-headed defense coordinator, Russell, for uh, Georgia. Eric Russell, yeah. Right. Third down at about a half a yard. They'll go on the ground, and there's a first down and more. There he goes. He's a great one. Give him the ball deep in the end zone or in the backfield. Let him find his way. A little stiff arm. Strong runner averaging about five yards a carry. Hey, this guy gets north and south running vertical. It's going to be tough to bring him down. Extra points were a problem last week. No problem that time. West Virginia takes their opening possession and marches it down against the Terrapins as Adrian Morrell scores from 41 yards away. Adrian Morrell picks up 60 yards on that possession for West Virginia, and on his fourth carry, he finds the goal line. Morrell, watch this stiff arm, Tony, like a Ken Norton jab. Boom! Now Morrell gets up the football field running vertical, and he's got that 4-4 speed. He's going to go for six. Scott Rosen, the defensive back for Maryland, was the recipient of that stiff arm. Up, Thanks for letting me come by. Adrian Morrell. Two touchdowns against Maryland last season, one already in the books here today. Todd Sauerbronn's kick again to the end zone will not be returned. Well, John, it looks like West Virginia found a solution to their horrible kick return coverage <laughs> they showed in the first game. They don't let the other team bring it back. The scoring drive impressive. 83 yards and 10 plays as Adrian Morrell Runs it in from 41 yards out. And you're exactly right, Tony. They can't, they can't beat you when they don't have the ball. And that's the best kickoff coverage in the world. Kick it out of the end zone. Maryland allowed a touchdown last week on the North Carolina State first possession. We'll see how they fare now. John Kaleo, the quarterback, handing off to Mark Mason. And Mason... Closes on the 25-yard line, brought down by Tommy Orr after a pickup of eight. Very talented junior out of Potomac, Maryland, currently leading the ACC in rushing. Was off to a great season a year ago, but broke his leg in the sixth game of the season against Georgia Tech and was out for the remainder of the year. Dangerous play here for... The West Virginia defense because Maryland has the advantage on second down and two. They'll put it up wide open over the middle. Taking it in is the Terps' Brett Stevenson. He'll pick up 11 yards on the play. Eight minutes and 25 seconds to play here in the opening quarter. Once again, the no huddle look from the Terps. On the ground, Mason. Mark Mason, the ball carrier for Maryland. 
Mary Hawkins, the sophomore defensive lineman out of Marietta, Pennsylvania, there to meet up with Mason. Kaleo definitely checking off to the inside handoff. Maryland lining up with two eligible receivers on the wideout. Also, number 22, Frank Wycheck, lined up in the tight end position. Maryland shows three receivers up top. Now, Richie Harris in motion on second down and eight. Oh, what a catch by Richie Harris. Harris had turned the Mountaineer defensive back literally around. He never saw it coming. 18 yards on the pickup for Richie Harris, senior out of Columbia, Maryland. West Virginia defense has to keep Kaleo in the pocket. Defensive line, outside linebacker, stay in your rush lanes because this guy gets to the perimeter. He's a lot better football player than sitting in the pocket. And a good catch by Harris. Kaleo on first down, has his man and drops at the 35-yard line. Dan Prunzik picks up five yards. Prunzik has 13 catches so far this season. He's a senior. Up until this season, he had seven catches in his entire career. Viva la run and shoot. That's the way the receivers are talking at Maryland. They love it. He's a Western Pennsylvania product from Mount Lebanon. Second down and four. They go to the ground. Mason has the first down. And more to the 15. And inside the 15 down to the 10-yard line. A pickup of 24 yards for Mark Mason. This is why the run and shoot creates problems. They're lined up in four wideouts. They slip a little draw to Mason, and this kid can play for anybody in the country. He's a big timer. David Mayfield comes up on the hit, has to wrap his arms, grab Jersey, bring him down. Fourth first down on this drive for the Terrapins. A week ago, they stumbled once they got inside the opposing 20-yard line. Let's see here. They're trailing seven to nothing. Again on the ground, this is Doug Burnett, and he'll go nowhere. Tom Briggs, the senior out of Liverpool, New York, drops Doug Burnett for a one-yard loss. Now, Maryland has had trouble in the red zone from the 10-yard line in with getting the ball in the end zone because of this, this spread-out offense. This point in the game, you've got to line up toe-to-toe -to -toe and have some fun. Again, they go to Burnett. This time, he'll pick up two. Defensively, Rick Dolly and Tim Brown for West Virginia. There's Doug Burnett, who's averaging just under three yards a carry coming into this game. Now, big play here on the drive. Third down and seven. Call it eight. Three receivers out to the right. Badgett makes the catch, but they'll lose two yards on the play. They flooded out on the right zone, tried to come back to the short side of the field, and West Virginia defensively was there as Boris Graham threw down Marcus Badgett. You know, with four wideouts, Tony, and you're so limited in space, there's no place for those receivers to go because of the, the squeeze and amount what they have to do. They throw the ball out in the flat, Boris Graham comes up with a big play. 27-yard field goal attempt for Dave DeArmas. His long so far this season was from 26 yards away. Bad snap. And the kick is there. So Maryland answers right back against West Virginia. It's 7-3 with inside of five minutes to play here in the opening quarter. Out here, Coach Don Nealon looks on. His club will take over now, leading it 7-3. to three. The Terrapins, on their second possession, marched the ball very nicely, John, against West Virginia, but they had to settle for the field goal. That's Maryland's uh, game plan coming in here, Tony. Establish a running game. <coughs> Back it up with that run and shoot. It's a 10-play drive. 
keep West Virginia off West Virginia's offense off the football field. Let the clock run down, try to be in this game in the fourth quarter, and come out with a win. Kickoff will be taken by Mike Baker from the 10 to the 20. And down the sideline. Nice job by Michael Baker up to the 35. A 25-yard kick return for the senior out of Waverly, Georgia. The Terps travel 71 yards in 10 plays as Dave DeArmas hits from 27 yards away. Maryland sporting those new helmets, the new look this year. Last year, remember, they had red helmets. Right. Well, Mark Duffner, the head coach, just about changed everything when he took over. New uniforms, the new helmets, absolutely new coaching staff. Here's Jake Keltzner on the play action. Takes a hit and goes backpedaling to the 41-yard line. That's a tough way to pick up five. Take a licking and keep dicking. Slow developing play, and so Keltzner kept it himself and they'll spot the ball just over the 40 yard line Kelsner just a, a tough young man 6'2 210 pounds he said he'll take a lick and just a football player he knows what direction to go in second and five handoff Morrell first down West Virginia six yards on the gain for the senior from Hawaii Mike Jarmalowicz wrapped him up to make the stop i don't think maryland can line up with west virginia toe to toe and punch him off the football so we're going to see a lot of sustained drives by this west virginia offense the key will be can west virginia's defense have enough finesse to control that run and shoot rodney woodard up the middle mark sturdivant there to make the stop john more so than normal West Virginia is going to its fullback, Rodney Woodard, here. What are they trying to set up there? Establish a running game between the tackles. And uh, with that version of the wide tackle six, they're just going to attack him and punch him off the of football. You know, Don Nealon loves that run, and he's going to establish the running game. All of a sudden, throw an option in there and throw the ball deep to Jet, and you've got a good game plan. Option look here. It's Kelchner. He'll keep it ahead to the 49-yard line. That'll bring up about third down and six, and penalty markers now fly on the play. Upfield, Jay Kearney, the receiver of West Virginia, was involved in a scuffle, and they're going to call the penalty against West Virginia. You know, they ran those two fullback plays prior to that, Tony, and what Dawn was doing was setting up that option. The same look that you just saw, the same... Uh, action now pull the ball out come down the line on the action and you get a gainer that'll bring the Mountaineers all the way back to the 35 yard line single back set Here's Kelchner to Jet. Dragged out at the West Virginia 48-yard line. Andre Vaughn there defensively for the Terrapins. Heck, that was the first uh, reception for Jet that wasn't a touchdown <laughs> on the quick out. But boy, just a nicely thrown ball, nicely executed football play. Richie Harris, the deep man for Maryland, stands back at the nine-yard line. This is Sauerbrunn punting for West Virginia. High, booming kick. Takes a West Virginia hop. And they'll mark it down inside the 10-yard line. Sauerbrunn with a 45-yard boomer. West Virginia holding on to the lead. Their own seven-yard line following that Sauerbrunn punt. Mark Mason on the carry, tries the left side. Penalty marker flies on the play. Normally in that area where you get a holding call as Leroy Axum, senior out of Miami, came up to make the stop on Mason. Penalty will go against the Terps. 
defensively now for West Virginia. Derek Wiley has come in at the strong side linebacker spot, and Wes Richardson has come in at the middle backer. Holding on the offense, half the distance to the goal, still first down. That will bring it inside the four-yard line now. Mark Mason will line up in his own end zone. Hawkins there for West Virginia Mark Mason trying to run off the left side there where tackle Steve Ingram is the anchor but Hawkins shed his block and was there to make the hit that was a big time play by Hawkins 6'5", 260 pounds coming off the block and making the tackle Again on the ground, big hole. Mason crosses over the 17-yard line. He'll be close to the first down. Pickup of 13 yards, and just like that, Maryland gets out of some major trouble. First down for the Terps. Mason extremely quick. This kid runs a legitimate 4-3-40. Exceptional athlete, 39-inch vertical and jump. And like we said, he's their super back. Mason goes out now, and Larry Washington comes in. He was suspended for the first two games. That's Washington in the backfield, a single back set. And they go to Washington. And he's dragged down at the line by Steve Perkins, the sophomore from Fort Lauderdale who missed the first two games with a dislocated elbow. You see it wrapped up heavily there. He comes on, and in his first play of the season, Drags down Larry Watch Washington with ease. Watch 97, Steve Perkins. That's a big time play. Running that little screen from the from the front side. He's got a, a lot of potential and a big career in front of him. Kaleo has time. Finds his man, Larry Washington. Over the 30-yard line for a first down, a 12-yard pickup. Washington, a true sophomore out of Randallstown, Maryland, had an incredible high school career. He scored 36 touchdowns as a senior, rushed for over 2,000 yards. So Maryland moving nicely on this possession, which started back on their own three-yard line. Along with John Garcia, I'm Tony Caridi. We head into the second quarter, West Virginia, leading uh, the Maryland Terrapins by a score of 7-3. to three. The Mountaineers took their opening possession and drove it right down on the field as Adrian Morrell scored from 41 yards away on a beautiful run. Maryland came right back and hit on a 27-yard field goal from Dave DeArmas. Old Don telling uh, Doc Holliday, inside linebacker coach, get him stopped, Doc, get him stopped. Terps began this possession on their own three-yard line there to the 32 and looking at first down and 10. On the ground, Mason sheds tacklers. First down, all the way inside West Virginia territory to the 49-yard line. 20 yards on the pickup for Mark Mason and he has been unstoppable to this point, breaking tackles, and he comes up slow there. Hey, and that was no arm tackle. I mean, they put the hat on him. He's 5'8", 190 pounds, exceptionally strong with low center of gravity. We said he's a big-time back. Right there proves it. He broke four tackles on that last play on the ground once again, and they'll move it to the 44-yard line. Statistically, through the first quarter, total yards West Virginia with 106 the Terrapins 120 West Virginia with 88 yards on the ground through the first quarter down to the West Virginia 44 yard line Doug Burnett now is in at the super back spot 
Kaleo going deep, has a man overthrown for Marcus Bajet. Good thing the ball was overthrown, Tony, because number one, Lewa Axum bit on the, the play fake, jumped to the inside. They had a big seam. West Virginia playing a lot of too deep, trying to funnel those receivers to the inside, and it's sustained level, a lower level and an upper level on the football field. Possession down, third and five. Kaleo again fires, overthrows, intended there for Wade Inge. Freshman out of Linden Wald, New Jersey, and the Terrapins, after starting off from their three-yard line and moving successfully, stagnates at the 44-yard line of the Mountaineers and will be forced into punting. Dave DeArmas is the punter. That's Tommy Orr standing back at his own 10-yard line. High spiraling kick. Fair catch being called for. Fumbled by Orr. Taken by the Terrapins. And that's a touchdown for Frank Wycheck. But hold on. Hold on. The ball will be blown dead. You cannot advance a muff. And they'll bring that back, but nonetheless, the Terps will have excellent field position as Tommy Orr botched the intended punt reception. Tommy Orr signaling a fair catch. Keep those elbows in. Ball just slips through. Who comes up with it? Old reliable, number 22, Frank Wycheck. He's been around this program for about the past 15 years, I think. Maryland will start from the West Virginia 18-yard line. There's a bad snap. They weren't waiting for it. West Virginia after it. It looks like the Terps got back on top of it. They'll lose 19 yards on the play. Look at Kaleo. Wasn't waiting for the ball. The quarterback wasn't even in the football game, Tony. That was 21. Mason, there was a substitution problem there. Kaleo ran back after it. <laughs> oh, my. Have you ever seen that? They lose 19 yards. Wow, and that hurt Maryland. Plus, to add insult to injury, an illegal motion penalty against the Terps because they weren't ready. They weren't <laughs> set at the snap. Now they look at second down and 27. Kaleo has a man over the middle. Dan Prunzik is good down to the 10-yard line. At the 25-yard line. Again, where is your free safety? Don't fight on it. Set. Stand tall. Leroy Axum lets Prunzik get to the inside. Same just runs a post. Again, his 14th reception. Again, he's another one of those guys that's been around this program forever. And boy, that was a big, big break for Maryland. There's an injured Maryland player back at the initial line of scrimmage. A 25-yard pickup. It's still third down and two. Mason is back in there. That's super back spot. On the ground, here's the delay. It looks like he has it. Working off that left side. Now, this is where things get tough for Maryland, where they, ha they have not had very much success over the two previous games. Ball inside the, the six, seven, eight-yard eight yard line. They'll send out three receivers to the right side. Wide open, in, complete for Richie Harris. Had him wide open over the middle. Number 25, Mike Collins on a, a strong safety blitz from the top of your screen. 
And boy, this should have been six. Maryland's upset wide open across the middle of the field. Again, West Virginia having secondary problems. Second and goal. On the ground, Mason brings it inside the five-yard line. Pickup of three. Look for short yardage situations down here near the goal line. Maryland will line up with two tight ends, three backs in the backfield. Look for them to run behind number 54, Steve Ingram. Mark Mason already with 71 yards here in the opening half. Confusion by the Terps, and they're going to be forced into using up a timeout. West Virginia leading it, but Maryland knocking on the door here. They'll be at the West Virginia three-yard line when we resume play. Mark Duffner said he was not overly worried that his team has been unable to punch it in once they've crossed inside the 20-yard line in the first two games. He says, I know this offense. I used it for six years at Holy Cross, and it works even, even when you do get into that scoring zone. Yeah, but he had a, a Heisman Trophy candidate, Gordy Lockbaum. First time we've seen Maryland line up in a huddle and break out of the huddle. Again, look for that two tight ends, three backs in the backfield. Mason, Wycheck, and Burnett, full house backfield. Play action, Kaleo has the end zone. Maryland with a touchdown. Wow. What a play fake. The Terrapins take full advantage of West Virginia's muffed punt, and they pound it in for the touchdown and take the lead. Watch this play action. Beautiful fake. Kaleo just coming. Faked out everybody in the stadium. Where is your backside? That backside outside linebacker, you have to play position football. Everybody has their responsibilities. Dave DeArmas with the extra point. And the Terps take a three-point lead. The 11 minutes and 50 seconds to play here in the opening quarter. West Virginia scouting reports show, Tony, in short yardage and goal line, two tights, three backs in the backfield behind number 54. Now West Virginia defense runs to that side. Kaleo gets in for the six points. That play right there was won on the chalkboard by the Maryland coaches during the week, Wednesday or Thursday night. Nicely executed and kept them in this ballgame. Damian Gallimore, a true freshman, is back deep to return along with Mike Baker. Fred Ensign handles the kickoffs for the Terrapins. And this one will take a bounce into the end zone, and West Virginia will start it off from the 20-yard line. Penalty marker now flies on the play. After the play had been blown dead, there's a push going on down there. And a personal foul penalty will be called against the Mountaineers. Absolutely uncalled for. After the whistles had already blown. That scoring drive of Maryland after the muffed punt, 17 yards and six plays, as Kaleo runs it in from three yards out. Wow. Just a, a dumb mental error, Tony. In these kind of football games, you can't let those things happen. You know, what's been surprising is the Maryland rushing game. First quarter, you know, they've almost had 76 yards. They've only averaged about 133 per game. Surprised how their ability to run the football. So the Mountaineers look at first down and 20, and Morrell is dropped at the six-yard line. They'll lose four yards on the play. The ball is blown dead. Maryland defensively fired up after taking the lead. Great job here, reaching in to make the stop. Darren Drozdov. 
very nicely executed. Now we're starting to see that very important momentum start to swing in, in Maryland's direction. And that last touchdown gave them a lot of confidence. Keltner in his own end zone gets out of trouble to the 12-yard line. Rich Phoenix wrapped him up. Kelchner picks up six. That'll bring up third down and long. Starting to see this, this Maryland defense starting to punch off the football and gain some confidence and knock some, some Mountaineers around a little bit. I mean, these kids are getting after it, and I, I don't care for the last 50 years. Maryland football players have always been very, very aggressive, and they will get after you. And that goes back to Jerry Claiborne, Bobby Ross, Bear Bryant. John Jones, make it Rodney Woodard. Rolled out at the 19-yard line by Mike Jarmolowicz. West Virginia will go three downs and out. There's a penalty marker on the play thrown behind the line of scrimmage. More trouble for West Virginia. It's a holding call against the Mountaineers. Take a look at Mike Jarmolowicz, Butkus Award candidate with great pursuit on the play. That's the way to play that linebacker position, Tony. Sideline to sideline. That guy stands in there tall, runs down the swing pattern. And as you said, a Butkus candidate. Again, he's another one of these guys that's been around that program for the last 50 years. Penalties refused. Maryland turns down the penalty because they had stopped the Mountaineers short of the first down. Todd Sauerbrunn comes on to punt, and Don Nealon, I'm sure, is saying to himself, the only problems we're having are with ourselves so far today. Sauerbrunn's punt bounces out at the 37-yard line. That's where the Terps will take over, a 44-yard punt from Sauerbrunn. 10-7. Maryland on top, 10 minutes and 16 seconds to play here in our first half. John Kaleo with the five-step drop, has time over the middle. Wycheck can't hold on. Matt Tifoni, the sophomore linebacker from Medford, New Jersey, there to knock wide check to the turf and there's a penalty marker on the play it will be a procedure call against Maryland Darren stud still warming up maybe Don wants to add some spark to this offense get something going Mountaineers decline the penalty. It brings up second down and 10. Looked like a design quarterback draw. They've got Kaleo. Stopped at the line of scrimmage. Matt Tafoni finally chased down the senior from Davidsonville, Maryland. He was the junior college player of the year in 1990 at Rockville Montgomery Junior College. Now you see Jake Kelchner, the Mountaineer quarterback, being attended to on the sideline. He injured his elbow last week against Pitt. It could be flaring up on him. Darren Studsill, as you saw, has begun to warm up. I see Dr. Bowers, the orthopedic surgeon around Kelchner. Maybe he's having trouble with that elbow. Kaleo has his man, Prunzik. He'll take it in. Sixty-three yards on the reception and touchdown. And Maryland storms back. They've scored 16 unanswered points. And they lead it by nine with 9.23 to play. West Virginia in a two-deep coverage. The weakness in the two-deep is right where they throw the football. Prunzik on a post right between both safeties, and if that ball hits there, it goes vertical for six. And it does. And Maryland storms back now against West Virginia, and they build up that lead. DeArmas' extra point attempt is there. 
the 185th consecutive extra point by Maryland. And it's a 10-point Terrapin lead. Watch the safeties are sitting on both hashes. The ball hits the weakness in the defense right down the pike. Prunznik, 5'11", 179 pounds, 4'5", speed. He gets in the ball end zone for six. Amazing statistic, Tony. Maryland has held this ball over 12 minutes with still nine minutes left in the second quarter. They're following their game plan to a T, control the football, keep West Virginia's offense off the football field. Mark Duffner says, I know we're just that far away from winning, not far at all. And his club now has come in here in the opening half and have taken a 10-point lead. You know, Duffner, he's been around the block. He's coached under Woody Hayes as a graduate assistant, played for Lou Holtz, and was recruited by Bobby Ross. So he's been around some big-time programs. And the success that he had at Holy Cross, a 91% winning percentage, the best in the country. He's a winner, no doubt. Ensign ready to kick off. West Virginia has made a change in its return unit. Damian Gallimore, the freshman who committed the personal foul penalty on the last kick has been taken out. James Jett has replaced him up top along with Mike Baker. Kick will come down to Baker from the four-yard line. He bobbles it. Breaks free, and here he goes to the 29-and-a-half-yard line. Sometimes you'll see that when the return man muffles the kick that stops that unit coming down the field for just a moment, and Baker was able to pick it up for 26 yards. The timing is just thrown off for just a second. Everybody kind of leaves their lanes. Baker finds a, an open seam, a great individual effort, and gets up the football field. Now you got your little kicker out there trying to make a tackle, holding on, lasso. That's Baker in motion. Kelchner has stayed in at quarterback. Option for Morrell. as he nailed at the 35-yard line after a pickup of five. You don't see many players get a clean shot like that on Adrian Morrell, but Brandon Bertha, number 12, came up and smashed him. That's Division I football at its best. That's Maryland-West Virginia football game. Sticking the hat right on the numbers. Keep that head up. Wrap the arms. Pitch a perfect tackle. Delay, here's John Jones. His first carry. And he'll pick up a tough yard. Jim Panagos, the nose guard. There for the Terrapins. That last Maryland scoring drive, just three plays, 63 yards. As John Kaleo finds Dan Plunzik. And Kaleo looking exceptionally sharp, standing tall in that pocket and throwing the football field, throwing the football. Third down and four. Kelsner has his man, James Jett. First down, West Virginia to midfield. 14 yards on the reception for the native of Shenandoah Junction, West Virginia, who was honored prior to the game for his gold medal exploits this past summer. Don Nealon has said he has to get the ball to James Jett more. Kelchner on a little rollout, hits Jett on an outcut. You know, last year, Jett only had a total of nine receptions, but the year before that, an amazing 31 receptions. They gotta get the football to Jett more often. On first down, Morrell picks up one. Clock winding down now. Seven and a half minutes to play in this first quarter. Maryland, or second uh, quarter, I should say. Maryland leads West Virginia. 17 to seven. Kelchner off the play action. Going deep for Jet. Batted down beautifully by Brandon Bertha. 
Kelsner did not put it far enough ahead of Jet. Jet had to slow and come back for it, and that allowed Bertha to come in and deflect it away. That's exactly right, Tony. Badly thrown ball. Jet on a deep post, and there's no, not too many secondary people in the, in the country that can cover him one-on-one. -on -one. Watch how he comes back to the football. Bertha's able to come back to adjust to the inside, and a, a real nice play. Bertha with two big plays here in the last series. Here's another big one. Third down and nine. They've got Kelchner. He breaks free. He'll be short of the first down by two yards. He moved it ahead to the 42-yard line. Too far for a field goal. Don Nealon's going to punt it away. It's still fourth and a long three. Richie Harris, the deep man, Todd Sauerbrunn has doing, been doing a great job for the Mountaineers. Puts up a high one, it may be too far, it is. Into the end zone, Maryland will take it back at the 20 yard line following a 43 yard punt from Todd Sauerbrunn. Sure. Maryland Terrapins take over from their own 20 yard line. Maryland leading at 17 to seven, quick drop. They set it up for Richie Harris. Defensively, Tommy Orr waiting for it, and he throws him down. It's a big time play by number 24, Tommy Orr. He's standing out there on an island all by himself, one on one. They throw a, a quick screen out there. He beats the blocker, comes up with the tackle. Here's Mark Mason, tries to pop it outside, and that time they've got him stopped. Boris Graham. Senior co-captain from Pemberton, New Jersey, trips up Mark Mason. Now that'll bring up third down and 11. <laughs> Maryland receivers look confused. Kaleo has a man, and Mike Collins has one, too. Richie Harris thrown down by Mike Collins, the junior from Huntington, West Virginia. And just like that, the Terps will be called on to punt. Now, that's West Virginia defense. Mike Collins and man coverage. Come on down now. Dave DeArmas, the punter, and dropping back deep is Michael Baker. Bad punt, he shanked it off to the right. Baker will take it on a hop across midfield. Baker to the 30. And Baker injured on the play. You see him holding onto that left ankle. He went down very quickly, may have rolled it over. Baker plays the punt on the bounce. Now he finds a little bit of a seam on the punt return and gets up the football field. Oh, looks like he may have twisted an ankle. With that, when that ball hit the ground, it let that punt return set up it gave another quarter of a second another second for the guys to get in position to block in excellent position now first and ten from the morale up the middle to the 25 a pickup of three very important series here for West Virginia inside of five minutes to play in the half Mountaineers trailing by ten Nate Ryan is in at tight end for the Mountaineers. 
John Camp is in there as well. A double tight end formation. Power formation, and Morrell finds a hole. Fumbles the football on his way down, but the official says it was down on contact. Nine yards on the pickup. Fumbling has been a big concern for Adrian Morrell this season. He fumbled twice in the opening quarter in the first game against Miami of Ohio, was benched the entire second quarter. That time it bounces out, but not before he hit the ground and picks up nine yards for a first down. Morrell on a little sprint draw has the, ex the exceptional ability to cut. And let's see if the ball, again, the ground cannot cause a fumble. Seventh first down for West Virginia. Here is a bootleg. Kelchner will try to turn the corner. And brings it down to the 11. Bill Inge, the strong safety, finally knocked Kelchner out. Change on that West Virginia offensive line. Right guard Jim LeBlanc is out. He is walking towards the locker room with a heavy wrap on his left shoulder. Dale Williams, a senior from Cleveland, Ohio, has come in now at the right guard spot. On second and six, it's Morrell. Inside the 10-yard line, he'll pick up two. Adrian Morrell, who has gone over 100 yards in three consecutive games, dating back to last season's game against Syracuse, has already 84 yards on 11 carries. Jay Kearney and James Jett are the wideouts on third down and four. Option look, Kelchner will keep it. Kelchner inside the two-yard line, first and goal for the Mountaineers. Well, the snake's elbow may be sore, but he's certainly not showing any ill effect. Little option, Kelcher comes down the line. The sign of a great quarterback is what does he do when the ball gets inside the 10-yard line? This guy is very, very productive. He sees that blue zone, and he's going to get it in there. Power eye formation from the Mountaineers on first and goal from the one. Close to the goal line, no signal yet. Touchdown now, West Virginia. They waited to unpile, and the Mountaineers score on a one-yard plunge. Rodney Woodard pokes it in there for his touchdown. That's his third score of the season. <laughs> Mike Vanderjack on, tries to make it a three-point game. It's there. The extra point is good as Rodney Woodard on first and goal from the one finds the end zone. If you're a linebacker, defensive line, and they give the ball to Woodard, you better be ready to tackle because this guy is a load. See, that big pile just moved when he collapsed it. Don Nealon sends in a play which uses his top two linemen, Lorenzo Stiles and Mike Compton. And if you saw the replay there, it was Compton and Stiles together, and Woodard goes over the top. When those linemen come off the line with flat backs down there on the goal line, you're able to get a little bit of momentum, drive that Maryland defense off the line of scrimmage, create a new line of scrimmage. Down in the end zone, they come up with six points. Plenty of good seats remain for the next home game coming up on October the 3rd against the Eagles of Boston College. The young grads and the old lads will be back in town as homecoming. Charge tickets by phone calling 1-800-352-2512 or visit any United National Bank location throughout the state of West Virginia. So far, end over end kick. Tough one to handle. Mason takes it at the 4. Ahead to the 30, to the 34-yard line. Derek Wiley was there for West Virginia to bring down Mark Mason. The Mountaineers scoring drive, 28 yards in two minutes and nine seconds. Rodney Woodard scores it. It was all set up by that punt return of Mike Baker that went for 32 yards. Unfortunately for West Virginia, they lost Baker on the play with a bad ankle. Play 
play action. Kaleo going deep. And it is nearly intercepted, intended for Wade Inge. David Mayfield, the free safety, and the cornerback, Tommy Orr, were there stride for stride. Again, the ball sat in the air too long. Tor Tommy Orr is one-on-one. -on -one. He knows he's got outside help from David Mayfield, his free safety, perfectly executed by the West Virginia secondary. That ball can't stay in, up in the air that long. There's Orr, who almost had an interception on the game's very first play. Went right into his hands and bounced out. On the ground, Mason. They got him. Matt Tafoni stops Mark Mason after just a one-yard pickup. That'll bring up now third down and nine. A tough little linebacker, six foot, 218 pounds. Mountaineer fans probably remember his daddy who played for the Mountaineers 1960s. Pressure's on. They've got him. Everybody came a calling. Tom Briggs, Boris Graham, and they drop him for a seven yard loss. And for the second consecutive possession, the Turks go three downs and out. Watch West Virginia defensive line collapse the pocket. Briggs with a nice swim move over the top. Graham from the backside. And we got a sandwich. A Kaleo sandwich. <laughs> First sack of the game for West Virginia. Stops the clock with 143 to play. West Virginia using a timeout here. Low snap. Just got that one off there. Jet, there's a penalty on that play. Jet makes the catch at the 30, but penalty against the Terrapins. True freshman Jermaine Lewis. <laughs> Makes a freshman mistake. He did not give Jet the necessary buffer to make the catch. He thought he made himself a whale of a play. <laughs> Throws him down. Watch. Gets Whoa. back up there and says, hey, I did it. Got it. <laughs> what do you mean? What do you mean? I've been with the opportunity to catch the kick. Five-yard penalty. Spot of the foul. First down. And you're right, Tony. That's a freshman mistake. He's a true freshman. He's got great, great speed. In fact, uh, he and James Jet are without question the two fastest players on the field today. Jermaine Lewis, who just made that uh, ill-advised play, was the fastest high school sprinter in the nation last year. All right, here comes Jake the Snake now on first and 10 from the Mountaineer 33-yard line. He's got Ed Hill over the middle, wide open. First down, West Virginia. As the junior from Cincinnati, Ed Hill, makes a 16-yard catch and run. Ahead to the 49. The Mountaineers will go without the huddle. The clock at 1 minute and 30 seconds. Kelsner sits back in the pocket. A great job by the West Virginia offensive line. And Woodard on that pass protection. Quick drop. Kelsner looks for Adrian Morrell. And Morrell drops it. I think Morrell was surprised that the ball came. I thought he had... I think he thought that Merrill was going. Was going. Yeah. Kelchner took a shot on that play just as he released the ball. Big time shot by Darren Drozdov. Back to the action. Kelchner steps up. This time he will take it for a first down. How do you like the snake? He was 15 <laughs> yards downfield and he pump fake. 17 yards for number 17. And that's a football player, Tony. You can't coach that. This kid is just a, has natural talents. Grew up in Berwick, Pennsylvania. Watch, he's 15 yards down the field, a little pump action. And out of bounds. Has the presence to go outside and stop the clock. Kelchner trying to give West Virginia the lead back. 104 to go here in the first half. The Mountaineers trail by three. Play action. They've got them. Oh, do they have them. All the way back at the 45-yard line. A loss of 13 on the play. 
The clock now continues to wind down. 47 seconds and counting. Keltner with the out cut for Hill. Incomplete underthrown. That'll stop it, as you see, with 33 seconds to play. You know, you just wonder, that ball didn't have a, as much zip as I've seen Kelchner throw the out cut. Just wonder if that pad has, uh, or if his elbow is bothering him. It looks like he is in pain. Because even that post pattern previously to Jet was underthrown. And you don't, I've, I haven't seen Kelchner underthrow a ball yet. Morell comes out, single back man is Rodney Woodard. Jet downfield. Nearly intercepted again, Kelchner under throws. Scott Rosen defensively batted it down. That'll bring up fourth down and 23 with 26 seconds showing on the clock. Mountaineers will go forward on fourth down. Apparently the thinking is if they don't make it, the Maryland offense doesn't have that type of quick strike to get it. Here's Kelchner on the roll. Badly thrown ball, and perhaps that elbow is bothering him. Maryland will take over with 19 seconds. You know, look for Maryland with 19 seconds to think that they could get a, a couple snaps off. They still have two timeouts. They like those trips to one side of the football field when the ball's on the hash. Let's see what happens. I think they're going to run the clock out. They're in their uh, prevent offense. That's what it looks like. Yep, they're going to drop a safety man back there. That's interesting. Kind of surprising. Probably the, the thinking is, hey, we're up 17-14. Let's not do something stupid to lose that momentum here before the half. That'll be it for our opening half. The Maryland Terrapins will take a three-point lead into the locker room over West Virginia. The way of the second half. Great kick. Jet in the end zone will go down to a knee. West Virginia will start it off first down and 10 from the 20-yard line. Jet hauled in one catch in the opening half. Darren Studstill will start the second half at quarterback for the Mountaineers. We talked about the elbow of Kelchner that appeared to be bothering him in the first half, and now Darren Studstill will come on. He saw very little time last week against Pitt. Starting quarterback for the Mountaineers last season. Option look, it's Adrian Morrell. Beats a man and carries ahead to the 26-yard line. Mark Sturdivant brings down Adrian Morrell. We mentioned that Adrian had 84 yards in the opening half. One stat you might want to follow as the game goes along as we see Darren Studstill. One stat you may want to follow is that uh, West Virginia is 4-1 and one in games in which Adrian Morrell has run for 100 yards or more. On the ground, it's Morrell again. They've got it strung out nicely, and they'll stop him at the 28-yard line. Right cornerback Mike Lacey there to guide out Adrian Morrell. That recent hurricane that blew through Hawaii did not damage the home of Adrian Morrell. Grew up on the island of Oahu. You know, with Stutz still behind that center, Tony creates a whole new problem for that West, for that Maryland defensive unit. So they know they will run a lot more option football. And here is the option. Bad toss. Morrell after it kicks it out of bounds smartly. At the 20 yard line, West Virginia will lose eight yards on the play. Morrell 
just knowing that he was in trouble, kicked the ball out of bounds. Stud still has been averaging about seven yards a carry on the ground. Has a total of uh, 46 yards. Sauer brought great kick here. Taken by Harris from the 34-yard line, and he's stopped up at the 45. A 46-yard punt and a 10-yard return for Richie Harris. And the Maryland Terrapins will have good field position to start off the second half here. Not a bad return there. I remember not too long ago a guy who used to return punts uh, with great accuracy, speed, and dexterity for the Mountaineers. His name was Danny Bugs, and Danny joins us here in the third quarter. Good to see you, buddy. Thank you, man. I need a dictionary to look up those words. <laughs> <laughs> Two-time All-American here at West Virginia. Spend some time with us here. And I know that uh, you're enjoying Letterman's Weekend here at West Virginia. Yes, sir. Everything is beautiful here. I I'm admiring this stadium and this crowd that uh, West Virginia. We didn't have anything like this when I was playing. <laughs> That's for sure. Yeah. Step right in here. There's uh, Bobby Smith who made the stop there on Dan Funzik. The ball moved ahead to the 45-yard line. That'll bring up second down and nine. Danny, you're living in Atlanta now? Yes, sir. I'm in, Al I'm in Atlanta, Georgia. Uh, working with kids and and just got up here for the ceremony and this great weekend West Virginia's having. There's Kaleo and that play will be blown dead at the 42 yard line. They'll lose on that play. Danny you've been all over the country playing ball. How do these facilities stand up to other places in the country? Well I tell you what this is one of the best college facilities that I've seen man. This is great. Deep into the archives of the West Virginia film, Tony. Back in 1973, that was Danny Bugs against the Maryland Terrapins. Ran that ball all the way back for a touchdown and led West Virginia to a late victory over Maryland. Here's a completion at the 45-yard line. Wade Inge hauls it in there. That's good for the first down for Maryland. A pickup of 13 yards on the play. Danny, uh, unfortunately, it looks like the Mountaineers are going to need that type of a play here today to knock off these Terps. Well, I tell you what, it seems like West Virginia is having a lot of problems in the secondary adjusting to this uh, no huddle uh, run and shoot offense. And I think what the secondary are going to have to do, they're going to have to get more physical in coming up uh, attacking the receivers. See, and, and plus the defensive line got to put more pressure on the quarterback. Here's Kaleo. This time they'll go on the ground and Mark Mason will pick up a couple of tough yards. I would imagine a guy like you would have loved to play in the run and shoot offense, huh? Oh, man, I, I'm right there in Atlanta with June Jones and Atlanta Falcons running that run and shoot, and it just gets you all excited. Being a receiver, that's the greatest thing going now, the run and shoot. Jim Kelly's running it. Chris Miller's running it. Warren Moon. So all the guys, basically top quarterbacks, are running the run and shoot. You were ahead of your time. Oh, man, <laughs> I tell you. Second down and five for the Mountaineer 39, and it'll go nowhere. They'll lose on the play. Mark Mason tripped up for a one-yard loss. You know, Danny, last week this Maryland offense ran an amazing 92 plays in one football I game. I saw the game uh, on television. They played North Carolina State, I think, and uh, it was a long football game, <laughs> super long. But that guy, that quarterback there is a super, super passer. So uh, he's going to give a lot of defensive uh, team's fits this year. Very big play here. Third down and call it seven. As his man incomplete. He was looking there for Wade Inge. And Maryland will be looking at fourth down and seven and Dave DeArmas will come on to punt the ball away. Tommy Orr out there. James Jett will drop back deep now. Standing at the ten. What's your greatest memory of West Virginia football, Danny? Well, I think one of the greatest memories is what we saw a while ago on television, uh, the punt against Maryland. But I think as a, as a team, when we went down to Miami and beat Miami, uh, University of Miami, and uh, that was before they got the real big powerhouse. But uh, I think that was a great time. Uh, I would have loved to have beat Penn State. <laughs> <laughs> so would everybody. Jett will call the fair catch at the 13-yard line after a 30-yard punt. We'll be back with Danny Bugs. 
Mountaineers take it over. First down and 10 from the 13. Adrian Morrell breaks it over the 15-yard line ahead to the 17. That'll bring up second down and six. The story on Mountaineer quarterback Jake Kelchner is that that elbow is the problem, and he could be out for the rest of this game. And so Don Nealon will go with Darren Studstill. You know, Danny made an interesting point at the break there, Tony. West Virginia needs to get James Jett and more involved in that offense. Double tight end formation. Stud still has Wooder, can't hold on. Big hit there by Bill Inge, senior rover back. And that'll bring up third down now and six. I'm sure, Danny, your memory of Maryland football has always been very, very physical, and they will get after you. Yes, sir. And I think that's what they're doing right now to West Virginia. And West Virginia need to reverse that and start getting physical with Maryland. And if they don't, I think that offensive uh, team is going to, uh, you know, get a lot of yards here today. Once again, two tight ends for the Mountaineers. Blitz is on. The pass incomplete, almost there for the tight end, John Kappa. Danny, what's, what's, what's your thinking when, a, when, a, when your quarterback is scrambling like that and you're a wide receiver? What goes into your mind right Come now? Come back to the quarterback. That's the only, you know, uh, anywhere in ball, they'll teach you if you receive a quarterback is scrambling, go back to the quarterback to try to help him out there to give him a better throw, a uh, better lane to throw in and that kind of thing. And uh, I think receivers now are just not doing that enough. Todd Sauerbrunn needs a big punt. He'll send Richie Harris back to his 30-yard line. <laughs> Penalty marker on the play, and it will go against the Terrapins. An illegal block, and what a punt from Todd Sauerbrunn. 52 yards on the punt, plus tack on the penalty, and Maryland will be marching backwards. Take a look here at the clip, a block from behind. Block in the back, above the waist, 10-yard penalty, be a first down. Keith Taparowski of the Mountaineers hit from behind. Penalty was obvious there as the fans responded with a huge ooh. So Maryland hurts itself there on the penalty, but they'll take it over from their own 24-yard line, leading West Virginia by three, the 10-minute mark of the third quarter. Kaleo again has time. Now they've got him. Keith Morris, a freshman from Elizabeth, New Jersey, makes his very first collegiate sack, and it couldn't have come at a better time. They drop him for a three-yard loss. That's again, what you're talking about there, Danny. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. They got to have it. West Virginia defensive line collapses the pocket, and Morris comes up with the sack. Just as Danny said, offensively and defensively, particularly the lines, have to get more physical. Shuttle pass. This is Mark Mason to the 25-yard line. Just got a hold of that one. Six yards on the pickup. Morris Graham was there for West Virginia. Maryland ran the shovel pass six times in the previous two games, so West Virginia was well-schooled and had to stop it. Obviously, they did a good job. Over the middle has his man, the Jet first down for the Terrapins inside the West Virginia 40-yard line. Kaleo comes up with a 33-yard completion on third down. And they waste no time in setting up now from the West Virginia 38. Mason. Breaking tackles all the way to the 25. There's a penalty marker, though, down on the play in the Maryland backfield. 
You have to be impressed with uh, Mason. He's a big time back, averaging close to six yards a carry. And this kid could play just about anywhere. Well, one thing about it, uh, West Virginia is not wrapping up on this guy. This guy has made a lot of yards because he's been bouncing off of people and things of that nature. So you got to wrap him up. It's basic fundamental football, like Vincent Lombardi says, goes back to blocking and tackle. That's right. You block, you tackle, you win. Yes, right? sir. <laughs> yes, sir. You ever thought about coaching? No, I think I'd do a better job just telling <laughs> it like it is. You don't have to worry about getting fired. That's right. <laughs> Maryland with a score here would really put pressure on West Virginia. They already lead it by three. Kaleo over the middle. Incomplete. Oh, what a hit. Michael Collins, the junior strong safety, absolutely crunched. Dan Plunzik. Take another look. They're going to call it incomplete. Those are the kind you don't want. <laughs> that was set up by Kaleo, and I'm sure he'll thank him when he goes back to the huddle. I don't think he'll thank him. I think he'll want to knock him out. <laughs> <laughs> Just too much air on the ball. And 10. Kaleo is 17 for 25 in the game. 201 yards and a touchdown. On the ground, they got him. Oh, boy. Rick Dolly, the senior out of New Creek, West Virginia, drops Mason for a two-yard loss. Dolly reading the inside trap very well. Closes down, comes up with a tackle for a loss. And this one-back offense certainly creates problems, particularly on the run. Motion on third down and 12. Kaleo says he drew West Virginia off. The referee is Courtney Mozzie. It will go against the Mountaineers. That'll make it a more reachable third down and seven. Also the center saw that the these defensive linemen were crossing the line, snapped the ball, and they drew the, the easy five yards. The Terrapins need to reach the West Virginia nine for a first down. Into the end zone for Badgett. Incomplete. Tommy Orr did the job on Marcus Badgett. Two old high school teammates there going at it chest to chest. They're both from Elizabeth High School in New Jersey, and that time, Tommy Orr won the battle. Also number four, Puppy Wright in Kaleo's face as soon as he threw the football. Here he comes from the strong side, sticks the hat right on the numbers. Good pressure. Field goal attempt coming up from 33 yards away for Dave DeArmas. He's one for one so far. And DeArmas puts it up and through. Maryland settled for a field goal, and the Terrapins take a six-point lead with inside of eight minutes to play here in the third quarter. A great candy bar. You will have a choice to take it at the 35 or for a re-kick. That Maryland scoring drive, which resulted in the field goal, eight plays, 60 yards, in just over two minutes. Dave DeArmas is now two for two in the field goal department. West Virginia will decline the penalty, but will take it from the 35-yard line. Head coach Mark Duffner trying to exhort his team on. On the ground, it is Morrell, and Adrian Morrell rolls over the 40-yard line down to the 43. That's a pickup of eight yards. A year ago, in this game against Maryland, West Virginia was able to go with a double tight end formation and just smash away at the Turks. 
334 yards on the ground last year. And, John, with Jake Kelsner out of there, they've gone to that double tight end set, and it appears as though that's what their setup is going to be. They're going to try to play as much power football as possible. Here's a counter play. Garrett Ford, his first carry of the game, gives West Virginia a first down on a four-yard pickup. That was a familiar name, isn't it? Garrett yes, Ford? sir. I was wondering. I hadn't seen this guy since his freshman year. What? What? I don't know what's happening. You know, the guy gained, what, 1,000 yards? 700, it's over 700 yards. 700 yards. And, and well, Adrian Morrell came on, and uh, Garrett dropped back there. And then they had a fullback problem last year with injuries, and they moved him to fullback. And so he was the uh, consummate team player, and he did a good job at fullback. And now he's playing both at tailback, as you see here, and at fullback. Here's Stud still. Quick pass. Jay Kearney, the junior college transfer, is ahead for a first down as West Virginia brings it inside Maryland territory down to the 41-yard line. Jay Kearney with his first catch of the game goes for 12 yards. Here's a guy that came in after transferring and played spring ball and was really out of his element, confused, didn't understand what was going on. But that experience that he gained in the offseason looking at tape came back and uh, has really impressed the coaches. They like what they see, and he's going to be a, a big contributor over the next couple of seasons. Ed Hill in motion on first down. Morrell looks for a hole and picks up a tough three yards. Clock winding down, six and a half minutes to play in the third quarter. Injuries playing uh, a role in this game for the Mountaineers. Jake Kelsner is out. Starting right guard Jim LeBlanc is out. And starting receiver Michael Baker is out. Stud still for Woodard. He's a tough guy to bring down. And a nice job there by Mike Lacey, the right side cornerback, to bring down a big old load in Rodney Woodard. He weighs 230 pounds. Maryland has been in this position over the last two weeks. They have played very well against Virginia and NC State and ended up losing the game in the fourth quarter. It came down to that point in the game. Here today, they're on top by six in the third quarter. Eddie Hill and Jay Kearney are receivers out to the right side on third down and seven. Option look for the Mountaineers. Stud still. Ball is loose on the play. Stud still on top of it. And he'll lose two yards. Rich Phoenix, defensive tackle out of Williamsport, Pennsylvania, came up from behind and dropped Darren Stud still. And, and Maryland's defense getting very physical on this last series. Watch the inside linebacker, number 40, Darmalowicz, runs down stud still from the backside. Todd Sauerbrunn tries to pooch it, may have got too much into it. He did. A 41-yard punt, and the Terps will take it over at the 20 with a six-point lead. Danny Bugs, we'd like to thank you for stopping by. Maryland taking over from the 20-yard line. John Kaleo trying to manufacture a little bit more insurance here with a six-point lead. Mark Mason on the carry. Boy, Dan, that's the first time I've ever had an opportunity to meet him. Fine person, any Tony. That's the first time you've ever met yep. him. Is first that time. right? Yeah. Throughout your illustrious career, I thought your pass would have crossed. Well, uh, he's a lot older than I. <laughs> <laughs> Certainly doesn't look it, John. Second down <laughs> and eight after the Mason carry. Again, they go on the ground. Again, Mason first down. Mark Mason over the 30-yard line, a pickup of 13 yards. And he's been really the story in this game so far, John. He certainly has. Look at that. 17 rushes, 105 yards. Remember, last year, 17 rushes, 68 yards. You're exactly right. That's the difference. Mason and the running attack. On the play action, Kaleo over the middle, incomplete. 
looking for Frank Wycheck. Tim Brown was there defensively. There's Wycheck, who, as a freshman, set an ACC record for receptions with 58. He's Maryland's all-time leading receiver. However, the fact that he doesn't have great speed, I think, is going to take him out of this run-and-shoot offense. He's gained a lot of weight. He's gained about 15, 20 pounds and has slowed him down. Mason, first down on the play, and a penalty marker flies. It looks like we'll get a face mask penalty here against West Virginia, so tack it on. A first down plus some. I think it may have been Tifoni right there. You no, know, he definitely got it. But I, I know those little guys who are 5'8", 190 pounds, and Mason particularly runs a lot better on turf than he does on natural on natural grass. He has a, a lower center of gravity, he has sharper cuts on turf, and he's quicker. So you're seeing a better back, I believe, here than you did at Maryland. With the penalty, the ball to the Maryland 49-yard line. Delay handoff. This is Doug Burnett close to the first down. In fact, you can give it to him. And 11 yards on the pickup for the sophomore out of Laurel Springs, New Jersey. West Virginia has to play better on first down. Now you put your, your defense in a situation. There's too many second and shorts, and now they've got another 10 yards there. That's a big, big down for this West Virginia defense. Pressure's on Kaleo, and he wisely throws it out of bounds, and a there. penalty marker will come on the play for intentional grounding. Kaleo pleads his case to the referee, Courtney Mozzie. And, and that came all the way from the back. If they Good. wave this one off, you're going to have 55,000 very angry fans. We'll disregard the flag. That wasn't, wasn't his call. Area. So instead of losing a down, Maryland will settle for an incompletion. Don Nealon lets his feelings known to the line judge. Mason again. He's still churning ahead. He'll pick up five yards on the play. Rick Dolly there to make the hit. Inside of three minutes to play in this third quarter, Maryland 20, West Virginia 14. Mark Mason now 130 yards on 20 carries. Blitz is on. And a oh, penalty flag will be thrown as Tommy Orr interferes on Wade Inge. I believe he definitely came over the back on that quick post. West, West Virginia on a blitz. Watch the center of your screen. Right. Oh, yeah. Right there. Absolutely. Almost held him. Boy, that that definitely hurt. Now you have first down on the 20-yard line. So the Terps had a penalty waved off. West Virginia thrown for an interference penalty, and the Terps with a first and ten from the 20-yard line. Mason again finding room. He'll find the goal line. Touchdown, Maryland. Wow. Again, that is a big time run. This one yard player. And he's only a junior. Mm -hmm. 
Mark Mason, a week ago against NC State, had the best performance of a Terrapin tailback in three seasons when he rushed for 164 yards. Well, he's on course to do a little bit better than that here today. DeArmas' extra point is good. And Maryland takes a 13-point lead with just over two minutes to play in the third quarter. He's going to be one of the, after this game, Tony, he's going to be one of the premier bat backs in the country. Coming in here, he averaged 123 yards a game. Just a simple handoff up the middle. As Danny Bugs said, West Virginia has to wrap him up. You can't let those backs get to the outside, the perimeter of your defense, and you've got big problems. Where's the linebackers? One thing I've noticed is that the tackling we've seen today, or the lack thereof from West Virginia, John, is that they're tackling very, very high, going up top, and they're not getting down low to get at those legs of Mason, and he's got the strength to when, ward them off. And he's all, the thing is, he's only 5'8", and he has a real low center of gravity. He cuts real sharp. When you tackle, you tackle for the numbers. I mean, every college player in the country has coached that. That's how you bring people down. That's how you knock them back. Fans like leg tackle. You have to stick your face in the numbers, wrap them up, and bring them down. James Jett awaits the kickoff of Fred Ensign. See, with, with, that, with that big nose of yours, Tony, you'd be great at tackling in the numbers. Onside kick attempt, and it works to perfection. Just over the 45-yard line, Dave DeArmas came on. He spooched the kick over the 45-yard line. It had to travel the necessary 10 yards. Marcus Bajet was there. He caught it. Maryland has the ball back. What a great execution. Maryland has West Virginia on their heels. They're not playing aggressive football. A Duffner showing, showing us some things here today. They made a switch of their kickers from Fred Ensign to DeArmas, and he worked that to perfection. Doug Burnett has come in at the super back position. Kaleo, he's going deep. He's got his man, Bajet, incomplete, and a penalty marker will come down again on Tommy Orr. Interference will be the call. Errors. Errors have cost West Virginia the last three plays in a row. Kaleo's throwing it up. I don't know about that one, Tony. Orr was beat, and he knew he was in trouble, and he tried to adjust. West Virginia secondary having a very tough time today. Another look as Kaleo goes down for Marcus Badgett. On the left hand, there's contact. Has it on his shoulder. Left hand yeah. on top of the shoulder. And definitely the hip. First and 10 now for the Terps from the 38-yard line. <laughs> Quick darts. Here's Richie Harris. First down. Harris inside the 25-yard line to the 23. A pickup of 15 yards. That's what's tough in the run and shoot. When you have great athletes out there, you throw the ball out there. It only takes one block for a big play. Now you have that corner one-on-one. -on -one. You pick up a block and you gain 15 yards. Based on what the West Virginia offense has done in the second half, a touchdown here by Maryland would put them in a super position to score their first victory of the year. This is Doug Burnett. Crosses over the 20 yard line. Maryland is controlling every facet of this game at this point. And one thing that surprises me is they've been very, very physical, you know, particularly on, on defense. On the ground, Mason's back. He'll be close to the first down marker. Give him three yards on the play. 
Jade Dubis. The Terrapin center, slow to get up. You know, the problem being ticking down the third quarter without Kelchner in there, can they go back and, and strike back within one quarter without Jake in there? Third down and call it a yard. Mason, got it. First down for Maryland, inside the 15-yard line. That's the 17th first down, John. seconds now remaining in the third quarter the clock is winding Mason off the right side not this time Tom Briggs met him up and brought him back they'll lose a yard on the play and that'll do it for the third quarter. Maryland outscores West Virginia 10 to nothing in the third quarter, and they lead it by 13 with one quarter to play. Maryland threatening to blow this one open. They lead it by 13. They'll have the ball at the West Virginia 11-yard line, looking at second down and 10. Maryland outscoring West Virginia 10 to nothing in the third quarter. They've taken control of the game. Motion at the line. Not a penalty marker down. <laughs> There will not be a penalty on the play. The referee had not signaled the start. Now, Maryland changing personnel on the fly. Wycheck goes out. He's replaced by Richie Harris. Quick drop into the end zone. Touchdown! Marcus Bajet on the first play of the fourth quarter. Scores on the touchdown from 11 yards away. Maryland is in full control. Maryland giving West Virginia a passing clinic today. You, when you're that close to the end zone, you can't get beat to the inside. Secondary has to control that receiver. You can't let him break across, across your face like that. It's a free passing zone. Maryland will go for the two-point conversion. Kaleo over the middle. No. The conversion is no good. And Kaleo was hit very hard on the play by free safety David Mayfield. The Terrapins lead it 33-14. to 14 With 14.48 to play here in the fourth quarter. Mountaineer fans living outside of the state of West Virginia can now follow their favorite team with a special telephone service. Call 1-800-846-4700 and ask for extension 5988. On that, you'll receive the MSN radio broadcast with Jack Fleming and Woody O'Hara anywhere in the United States or Canada. All you need to do is get a hold of a touchtone phone, a MasterCard, or Visa. It's called Team Line, and you'll never have to miss another Mountaineer game again. Amazing, Tony. Maryland, 18 first down, 7 for 12, third down conversions, over 200 yards passing. That's the story of the football game. And what a great, great play they made to set up this possession on the onside kick. It worked perfectly. Caught everybody on their heels. 53 yards, 7 plays, Kaleo to Bajet. This Duffner is going for the juggler. Fred Ensign now is back to kick off. 
James Jett and Garrett Ford are back deep to return. The Mountaineers are down by 19 points. Jett will bring it out. Tripped up over the 20-yard line. You know, all week, Duffner said, hey, these kids have played very, very well. We just haven't done the little things that it takes to be a, a solid and a very good football team. He really had a lot of confidence and faith in them. They've showed it today. Ed Hill and Jay Kearney are the receivers on first and ten. Stud still. Takes his way across the 25. Out ahead to the 28-yard line. A pickup of seven yards. Bill Inge, strong safety, came up to make the stop. still fires over the middle this is Kearney for the first down Jay Kearney ahead to the 44 yard line 17 yards on the pickup for Kearney his second catch here in the second half you know with only 13 13 and a half minutes left West Virginia has gonna have to put the ball in the air they're down 19 points they need some quick strikes Ed Hill, split end to the near side. James Jett out to the far side. Stud still out of the pocket. Cross midfield. Down to the 49 in Maryland territory. That'll be a seven-yard pickup. Second down and three. There in Stud still, who began the season as West Virginia's starter. Played a couple of series through the opening game into the second quarter, and then Jake Kelchner came on and hadn't relinquished that spot until today because of an in injury to his elbow. Here's Rodney Woodard looking for the first down. Madison Bradley makes the stop right near the first down mark at the 46-yard line. Chain gang will come over from the far side. Attendance today, 55,727. And they are exiting the stadium very, very quickly. With great expediency. They do not think that there's a fantastic finish in the works here. Mountaineers will be about four or five inches short. Maryland has run, Tony. Last week they ran about 92 plays. So far in three quarters they've ran 62 plays. Just about 50-50. 33 pass and 29 run. On third and short to give up the middle. Good for the first down plus a penalty marker on the play may have a face mask inside there that's what it is against Maryland West Virginia will move the ball ahead five yards into the run Jamalowicz number 40 on the face mask 235 pounds senior he'll strike you there's no doubt about that he's definitely an, an all-american candidate single back set on first down and ten stud still has a man it's the tight end Nate Ryan and Ryan is down to the 31 yard line 
You know, that Maryland secondary, they're going to play off the ball. They're not going to let anything get behind them. Just as the Nate Ryan was in front of the, the linebackers, keep that ball in front of you, close on the ball, make West Virginia work for every yard that they have to get and, where, and take that clock down. Adrian Morrell will line up in a slot to the right on second down. Blitz is on. Stud still. Nice work to Woodward. And Rodney Woodard rumbles over the 20-yard line. Excellent play there by Darren Studstill. His experience showed as Maryland came up. They showed the blitz. They came with the blitz. And Studstill with a quick drop finds Woodard. Quick screen. Watch number 75 out front there. Styles. Good block. Woodward cuts to the inside. It's rolling down the football field. 16 yards on the pickup for Rodney Woodard. West Virginia inside the Maryland 15-yard line. Double tight end formation. Morrell inside the 10. Mike Lacey, the right side cornerback, caved him in after a five-yard pickup. You know, West Virginia sustaining a, a little drive here, but again, the clock continues to tick down with only about 11.30 left. They need a quick strike. Again, it's Morrell loses his footing as he comes up to the five-yard line. He'll be short of the first down, a pickup of two. One big reason why Maryland has been able to control this game is that they've played, from a turnover standpoint, perfect. No interceptions, no fumbles. Henceforth, they're not giving the ball away. That's the whole philosophy of the run and shoot, Tony. Control the tempo, control the football, keep the other team off the field offensively, and that's exactly what they did. The handoff goes to the fullback, Jim Freeman. The Terrapins say that they have him stopped short. But, but don't fall short of this Maryland defense. They've played very, very well. Oh, absolutely. They will be short of the first down. That'll bring up fourth down and less than a yard. And the Mountaineers are going to have to use a time up, time out here. Don Nealon will talk it over with Darren Studstill. Welcome back to Mountaineer Field. West Virginia will be going for it on fourth down and less than a half a yard. Motion at the line, the left side penalty marker wow. will go against the Mountaineer. That hurts, Tony. Now you turn a, a fourth and inch of situation into a, a fourth and five. Full start on the offense, five-yard penalty, still fourth down. Errors have cost West Virginia all day. There it is. Left tackle, Rich Braham, left early. That really just kills you there. You take That's a right. timeout to get everything set. You have to call new play. I mean, you scratch what you called, probably called a, you know, a quick handoff to Woodard. You know he can get the first down. Now you got to put the ball in the air, fourth and six. Dump it out. There's Morrell. Touchdown, West Virginia. Well, maybe it's a blessing you have to give the ball to Morrell. Just a little quick screen. The big guy's out front. Morrell up and over. Alley-oop for six points. The extra point attempt from Mike Vanderjack is good. West Virginia trails it now by 12 points with 10 minutes and 23 seconds to play. 33-21 is our score as Adrian Morrell scores his second touchdown of the afternoon. A quick screen, watch Compton, Williams, Styles all out front. Morrell over the top, knows he's got six points. 
We may have a football game. They'll need two more of those to get back into this game. West Virginia trailing it by 12. 10 minutes and 23 seconds to play. You think Maryland will be ready for the onside kick? The way the offense has been moving, I don't know if West Virginia can afford to do that right now. Our next MSN television broadcast comes up Saturday, September the 26th. The replay of the Virginia Tech game over many of these same MSN affiliates. Check your local listings for the station and time in your area. Mountaineers and the Hokies next week. Maryland has their hands team in. All receivers, running backs up front, wide check. Brown puts it deep into the end zone. Maryland will take it over from the 20-yard line. The scoring drive for West Virginia, 78 yards in 11 plays, using up just over four minutes as Darren Studstill on fourth down and five finds Adrian Morrell for 10 yards. Big series for this West Virginia defense. Has to be three plays and out. Get the offense the ball back. Mason stops but keeps on going. Mark Mason with a first down run over the 35-yard line. A 14-yard pickup for Mark Mason. He, they had him bottled up, and again, they cannot bring him down. Just an inside trap. West Virginia has him stopped for no gain. Wrap him up. Mason turns a no-gainer into a 14-yard play. That's the 19th first down in this game. You see Mark Mason now is soon to go over his career high of 168 yards. Mason again, this time, he's smashed down at the 35 by Rick Dowley and Wes Richardson. Richardson had a hold of him on the play prior to that one and missed him that time he said there's no way you're getting out of my sight this time there's linebacker play right there 41 west richardson closes on the ball wraps him up over the middle intercepted by mike collins that's the break that west virginia has been looking for Collins to the 35-yard line in Maryland territory. It's the first interception, the first turnover in the game for Maryland. 21 yards on the return. MSN affiliates, check your local listings for the station and time in your area. Mountaineers and the Hokies next week. Maryland has their hands team in. All receivers, running backs up front, wide check. Brown puts it deep into the end zone. Maryland will take it over from the 20-yard line. The scoring drive for West Virginia, 78 yards in 11 plays, using up just over four minutes as Darren Studstill on fourth down and five finds Adrian Morrell for 10 yards. Big series for this West Virginia defense. Has to be three plays and out. Get the offense the ball back. Mason stops but keeps on going. 
Mark Mason with a first down run over the 35-yard line. A 14-yard pickup for Mark Mason. He they had him bottled up, and again, they cannot bring him down. Just an inside trap. West Virginia has him stopped for no gain. Wrap him up. Mason turns a no-gainer into a 14-yard play. That's the 19th first down in this game. You see Mark Mason now is soon to go over his career high of 168 yards. Mason again, this time, he's smashed down at the 35 by Rick Dowley and Wes Richardson. Richardson had a hold of him on the play prior to that one and missed him that time he said there's no way you're getting out of my sight this time there's linebacker play right there 41 west richardson closes on the ball wraps him up over the middle intercepted by mike collins that's the break that west virginia has been looking for Collins to the 35-yard line in Maryland territory. It's the first interception, the first turnover in the game for Maryland. 21 yards on the return. Kaleo goes to the well once too often, tries to hit the middle of the field. Look who's standing there. Mike Collins, 25. West Virginia gained a little bit of momentum here, the turnover that they needed. First turnover for Maryland. On first down, the option look from the Mountaineers. Stretched out well. Morrell is there. And Adrian Morrell inside the 30-yard line to the 28 of Maryland. That stops the clock with 9 minutes and 19 seconds to play. That puts West Virginia, John, in a good play position here on second down and three don nealon can go run he can go pass that's right Tony. just what we talked about first down is very very important give your offense a break give him a free down option to the right morrell is down oh what a beautiful defensive job by the nose guard jim panagos he drops morrell for a four yard loss that's a great great play by that maryland defense They've been very, very aggressive all afternoon. Pentagos playing off the line. Single back set on third down and seven. Nearly intercepted by Mike Lacey, intended for Ed Hill. Number 31, Mark Sturdivant. Great pressure on Studsfield that time from the front side. Caused that hurried throw. Coming into today's game, West Virginia was nearly 60% on third down conversions. Here today, the Mountaineers are just 5 for 13 on third down. And now they're looking at fourth down and seven. into a crowd, incomplete, intended for Jay Kearney, and Maryland will take the ball over from the 32-yard line. The Terps will try now to hold off the Mountaineers. Carry from Mark Mason, the Mountaineers say that they have it. Fumble as they try to go off the left side. And now contact being made, and uh-oh. Back up field, they're still trying to find out who's got the football. They say Maryland 
has regained possession, and now they'll have to sort out the penalties. It's now second down. White recovered the fumble. Setting fouls on each team. Now second down. Second down. This is what started this all. Rick, Rick Dolly. You can't really tell from that angle if the if the impact caused the fumble for it was it was caused by the ground. Second down and ten. Rick Dolly jumped over the line. Side. It will go Under against the Mountaineers. That will make it second down and five with eight minutes and 11 seconds to play. Maryland, 33, West Virginia, 21. Mason hit in the backfield, but guess what? They don't get him. Over to the 41-yard line, a three-yard pickup. I'll tell you, this, this young man is very, very impressive. I know you, you could say, hey, West Virginia is not doing a good job tackling, but this guy is doing an exceptional job running. Coming into today's game, he was averaging 126 yards. And he's well over that here this afternoon. On third down and short, Mason plunges ahead. That'll be close to the first down. In the T-shirt is West Virginia's Jake Kelchner, who started the game at quarterback, injured himself in the opening half, and has not played here in the second half. He just didn't have the zip, even from the first series, Tony. You could tell there was something wrong. Didn't have the, the velocity on the football that we saw in the previous two games. They'll be short of the first down, and Maryland will punt the ball away to West Virginia with inside of eight minutes. West Virginia is confused. Trying to get their personnel out there for the punt, and they finally do. James Jett back at the 23. Nice job by Diarmas. Puts the ball out of bounds at the 27-yard line. That's where West Virginia will start off trailing it by two scores. This copyrighted broadcast is authorized under broadcasting rights granted by West Virginia University through its Mountaineer Sports Network solely for the entertainment of our viewing audience. Any publication, rebroadcast, or other use of the description and accounts of this game without the express written permission of the Mountaineer Sports Network is prohibited. The announcers on the broadcast are employed by MSN. References to products made by the announcers are paid commercial messages. There's Larry Holton, first-year running backs coach for West Virginia, looking on. Here's the pass to James Jett. Jett squeezes himself down the sideline to the 34-yard line. You know, Larry has coached some exceptional tailbacks in his career. Barry Sanders, Tony Dorsett, Thurman Thomas, Adrian Morrell. And he says uh, quite uh, favorably that Adrian Morell is right up there as far as some uh, in that group. Not to say that they're going to be future, he's going to be a future Dorsett or 
Thurman Thomas, or Barry Sanders for that matter, but he says he's got some great abilities. Here's Studd still on a roll. Maryland after him, has a man. First down, West Virginia, Ed Hill with a 10-yard pickup. Second reception in the game for Hill. Hill will stay in there, lining up wide to the right. James Jett to the near side. Stud still steps up, has his man again. It's Hill, first down, West Virginia. And Hill down to the 31-yard line. That's a pickup of 27 yards as Ed Hill comes up with back-to-back -back receptions. Ed Hill, who had three catches coming into the game, has three catches here in the second half. Kelchner's, sorry, stud still standing in the pocket strong. Throws a nice zip on a little curl pattern. Hill picks up a big gain. Moves the sticks, slows the clock down a little bit. Six and a half minutes left in the football game. John Jones into the interior of the Maryland front will pick up four yards. West Virginia has two timeouts remaining. Maryland has all three. And you go back to that turn on possession on an onside kick, how important that is the outcome of this football game. Coming up on the six minute mark. John Jones stays in at tailback on the play action. Stud still has Brett Paris open in the end zone. But overthrows. Darren did not see him early enough because Paris was wide open. That stops the clock with 5.58. Stud still on the move. Boy. Obviously disappointed. Adrian Morrell will line up in a slot position. On third down and six. Stud still has Ed Hill. And they'll have a first down to the 20-yard line. They needed six, and they pick up seven. Again, West Virginia moves the sticks. The clock slows down. Stud still stands in the pocket. What a beautiful catch by Ed Hill. Lays out, knows where he's at as far as the sticks are concerned, and picks up the first down. Hill has three big grabs in this possession. Clock now starts up again. Five minutes and 30 seconds. Quarterback draw. Stud still has open field. Stud still inside the five-yard line. That'll stop the clock with 524. 17 yards for the junior quarterback from Riviera Beach, Florida. Beautiful play selection by Don Nealon. Has Maryland back on their heels a little bit. Quarterback draw is set up per perfectly. Studstill gets a big gain and gets out of bounds. Stops the clock and moves the sticks. West Virginia with a power eye formation. That's Freeman in motion. The toss to Morrell. Oh, they've got him back at the six-yard line. A four-yard loss. Adrian Morrell was put up and put down by Bill Inge. The clock now inside of five minutes. Boy, Inge has just been a tenacious hitter throughout this whole game. Remember that big hit he had in the first half? And boy, that was a big tackle coming up with a four-yard loss.
single back set. There's no one on Ed Hill. There's two on one to the right side. Touchdown, Hill, wide open. They never saw him. He was totally uncovered. And Darren Studstill looked up. He saw Hill, and he fires it right there. West Virginia now is coming back with 425 to play. There's Mike Baker, who started the game, injured his ankle. He comes on to give a big hug to Ed Hill, who made four catches on that possession. The extra point is there. West Virginia to within five with 4.25 to play. Maryland makes a mental mistake. West Virginia lined up in twins, one man out there. Studstill still sees that. Eddie Hill converts it right now to a quick slant, and they pick up six. Four minutes, 25 seconds to play. Maryland will have it when we return. West Virginia scores again. As Darren Studstill looks over, he sees that Ed Hill is totally uncovered and rifles it right in for the score. West Co Virginia down by five, 33-28, 425 to play. Coach Caridi called it. I am impressed. John, man. you know what they say, even a blind squirrel finds a nut every <laughs> now and then, but I could see him wide open. But did you notice how Studstill hurried up, snapped the ball, and, and didn't give him time to adjust? Sauerbrunn's line drive kick takes a hop. This is dangerous Mark Mason, and he's downed at the 17. Maurice Richards, a backup defensive back, makes the stop after a 15-yard return. There's Ed Hill, who just caught the touchdown. He wants to get back on the field after a 73-yard nine-play scoring drive. Well, this is what it's all about. The defense has not done the job for West Virginia this afternoon. Now they've got another chance. Mountaineers got the fans hooting and hollering, I'll tell you that. They throw a flat pass to Mason, and he'll be knocked out by Kwame Smith. More importantly, that stops the clock with 4.13 to play. And the noise could hurt this run-and-shoot offense if Kaleo can't communicate to those wideouts. Let's see how well Kaleo uses the clock up here. There's still 20 seconds on the play clock. He should work this clock all the way down before snapping it. Shovel pass. They've got him at the 19-yard line. Matt Tafoni. Again, they go to Mark Mason. That will bring up third down. West Virginia will, excuse me, John, insert another defensive back. Leroy Axum is out there. West Virginia playing their nickel package, five D-backs. They need the 28-yard line. They're going deep, incomplete. Leroy Axum and Tommy Orr are back for the Mountaineers. And Maryland will punt the ball away. And all the fans who flock out of the stadium are flocking back in here for this last three minutes. Back in 1973, Danny Bugs, in the final moments, returned a punt against Maryland for a touchdown and a victory. James Jetnow waits back on his 41-yard line. Bad snap. Diarmas gets it away. Jet will let it bounce out at the 45-yard line. Well, the Mountaineers will have another crack on it with three minutes and 21 seconds to play. A 35-yard punt by Diarmas. An excellent field position. That ball on the 45-yard line. Plenty of time. Don't have to go out there and panic. You got three minutes and 21 seconds. West Virginia has two timeouts, as John said. 
Mark Dumpner, the head coach, hoping that his team can hold off West Virginia. The Mountaineers down by five. A field goal will do them no good. Stud still has a man incomplete for the tight end, John Kappa. Defensively, Eric Wood was right on the play, and that'll bring up second down and 10. That's all in the second half, 11 of 17 for Studstill. He's done the job. Pressure's on. He breaks through the tackle. And they drag him down at the 42-yard line. Again, it's Eric Wood. A two-yard loss on the play. And the grant, again, this Maryland defense, very, very aggressive. Studstill running for his life across the football field. Barely gets back to the line of scrimmage. Big down, third and about 11. This is what all the meetings are about throughout the week in preparing for a team. This is where you bring out your best play. Stud still in trouble for Hill. Off the fingers and out of bounds. The Mountaineers are down to one play with 228 showing on the clock. And he had had Hill on the flag. Barely off the mark. Got to have that. That's it's there. Up. It was there. Fourth down and 12. They need the Maryland 45 yard line. Morell, a slot man to the left. Over the middle. First down, West Virginia, Jake Kearney. He keeps on churning down to the 35-yard line with two minutes and 18 seconds to play. They pick up 22 yards. And not only that, Tony, it took literally 10 Maryland defenders to bring Kearney down on a little hook pattern. Watch this. One, two, three. And he's still going, fighting and scratching. Five, Boy, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Three receptions for Jay Kearney, all of them in the second half. That one the biggest. Eye formation now for the Mountaineers. Handoff inside Woodard. He needs to get that ball out of bounds. He goes ahead for six. The clock now inside of two minutes. West Virginia still has two timeouts. Second down and four. He's got a man, Morrell. Instead, he comes to Kearney. And that's a good first down to play for West Virginia as Jay Kearney hauls it in. That will stop the clock with 126 to play. Eight yards on that reception. Now West Virginia is signaling a timeout. They're 20 yards away from the end zone with one minute and 26 seconds showing on the clock. That will leave them with one timeout. Mountaineer Magazine comes your way each week on many of these same MSN stations. We'll be talking with head coach Don Nealon about this game and the upcoming game against Virginia Tech, and you'll get a chance to meet Calback Adrian Morrell. Join us Friday evenings and Saturday mornings for Mountaineer Magazine on many of these same MSN stations. Boy, did this turn into a football game. Maryland has lost their first two games late in the fourth quarter. Well, they're going to try to stop that here. And West Virginia on the other side will, for the second time in three games this season, try to win it on their final possession. In the opener against Miami of Ohio, they marched down the field and were able to get a 46-yard field goal attempt off. It just missed to the left. They had to settle for a tie. Well, today, Darren Studstill is trying to lead a furious fourth-quarter rally 
to give West Virginia a come from behind win. And, and the fourth quarter, Tony, has been a, a rough time for the Maryland defenders. They've given up about 12 points a game in the fourth quarter alone. So you really have to take a look at what's going on for this Maryland defense. Is it conditioning? Uh, you know, what's the problem with the fourth quarter? First down and 10 for the Mountaineers. Stud still goes for Morrell. Touchdown, West Virginia. They've done it. <laughs> a 20 yard touchdown pass the touchdown is good there's a penalty marker down on the play because West Virginia stormed onto the field after the touchdown. It will be an unsportsmanlike or an illegal participation call against the Mountaineers. You know, Tony, that is a very, very costly pen penalty. I know emotion plays a, a very, very important part of this game, but now you give them 15 yards on a kickoff to an offense that's been very, very productive. West Virginia will go for the two-point conversion, which could give them a three-point lead as the officials continue to meet to sort out the penalty. And here's the call. We have two dead ball, unsportsmanlike conduct fouls. Oh, West Virginia will take them on the kickoff. Oh, my. 30 yards. Wow. 30 so yards of penalties one, on the kickoff. One was Morrell throwing the ball into the stands, and the other one was the unsportsman of the players coming onto the field. And we said, boy, that's a very, very costly. Because you look at giving that, that offense field position, and you're only down at this point by one point, and you're in field goal range in no time whatsoever. West Virginia puts the ball on the left side hash mark. They'll be going for the two-point conversion. Now they'll re-huddle. Can you imagine Duffner? He has lost all three games in the fourth quarter. He hasn't he lost this one yet. <laughs> mark that down. He has not lost this one yet. In six seasons at Holy Cross, Mark Duffner lost five games. He's on the verge right now of losing half that many in just three weeks at Maryland. But in time, he will have the Terrapins back to prominence in the ACC. You can see that coming. And if this penalty comes back to haunt West Virginia, John, they have only themselves to blame. That's right. I don't think I've ever had the opportunity to see two 15-yard penalties. <laughs> so They're going to mark off one of these penalties on the conversion attempt. So West Virginia will step back and then mark one off on the kickoff. So they're going to try a conversion here from the 17-yard line. They scored the touchdown from a 20-yard point, 20-yard touchdown reception. Now they're going to try to get in there from 17 yards, make it 18 yards on the conversion. James Jett wide to the right. On the roll is Studstill. 
firing into the end zone. Penalty marker on the play. He may have been close to the line of scrimmage, Tony. Marker is thrown down near Studstill's release point. That will go against West Virginia. Ineligible man downfield was the call from our referee, Courtney Mozzie, who has indeed earned his money here this afternoon. Ineligible receiver downfield on the offense. Penalties refused. Extra point is no good. Have a 15-yard penalty and a kickoff. 34-33, West Virginia has the lead, but Maryland can win this game with a field goal. Here's another look at the touchdown, which gives West Virginia the lead. Studs still standing in the pocket. Morrell just coming out of the receiver spot on a little flag. And how important is that backup quarterback today? You know, we talked about the, the quarterback controversy and uh, Darren Studs still being on the bench. He has brought this team around in the second half. Crazy game, I'll tell you. Remember now that Maryland has all three of its timeouts. And plenty of time. Plenty A minute and 20 seconds in that no huddle offense is an eternity. 55 yards go the Mountaineers in just two minutes and one second. As Stud still finds Morrell for 20 yards. Remember, there was a fourth down reception there by Jay Kearney that kept that drive alive. Now it's up to Don Nealon's Mountaineers to hold off the Terps. Todd Sauerbrunn will be forced to kick the ball off from the 20-yard line because of that penalty. Mark Mason at his 15 will move up a bit. If ever there was a time for the powerful legged Sauerbrunn to put one into orbit, this is it. Line drive, tough kick. The Terps will take it over at the 43 yard line in their own territory. This as Joe Cooper, one of the backup receivers, was able to get down on the ball. The same field position that West Virginia started their drive on before the score. Maryland with three timeouts. will try to come back to win this football game now. Out of the shotgun, the crowd very noisy. Kaleo. They're after him. And he's hit as he releases the ball. Boris Graham from the backside, put Kaleo down just as he released the ball. Great, great pressure by that West Virginia defensive line. Graham coming back from the backside, and right there, that's a, a rush sack. Kaleo trying to get his play call across the line. They're after him, he fires. Incomplete, Kwame Smith. He was on Wade Inge, literally step for step and wrapped him up as soon as the ball came in. One minute and six seconds showing on a stopped clock. Third down and 10. Maryland, 5 for 13 on third down. Kaleo, he's hit by Tom Briggs. The ball is loose. They'll rule it as an incomplete pass, but Tom Briggs did his job. Graham from the backside, Briggs from the front side. Great pressure. West Virginia defense needing a big play out of Briggs today. Came right at the opportune moment. Maryland will use a timeout with 59 ticks of the clock remaining. They'll be looking at fourth down and 10. It has come down to one play for Maryland.
Watch Briggs from the top. He, little swim move on the tackle over the top. Sticks the face right in the hat. Great pressure. A year ago against Maryland, Briggs came up with hu two huge sacks, deflected two passes, and recovered a fumble. He came up at the I mean, most is he important a, time here against Maryland. Is he a football player? Having fun out there, has blood on his pants and elbow pads. Don Nealon telling the crowd, start the stream right now. Maryland led this game in the fourth quarter, 33 to 14. West Virginia has cut back that 19 point deficit and they lead by one. This could be the ball game right here. Going deep. It's caught at the 37 yard line by Marcus Bajit. Badgett hauls it in. A 19 yard pickup with 53 seconds to play. No huddle by the Turks. They're getting dangerously close now to field goal range. They still have two timeouts. Kaleo again, firing, has his man at the 30-yard line, Richie Harris. 40 seconds left on the clock. You still have a 45-yarder from this point right here. And second and short. They're after Kaleo, firing incomplete. That will stop the clock with 21 seconds to play. Sends Dan Funzik to the right side. Watch for the running play here on third down. Well, they're going to put it up. He goes. He's got his man incomplete. Looking for Wade Inge. Leroy Axum was there for the Mountaineers. It's fourth down. And it's a 45-yarder. Maryland will stop the clock. The ball's in good position on the right hash for a soccer-style kicker. What pressure for a freshman. Dave DeArmas has a chance to be the, the hero. We mentioned Dave DeArmas. He is a freshman kicker for the Terps. His brother Dan did a tremendous job through the years at Maryland as a kicker. Here today, DeArmas is two for two. His long has gone for 33 yards. High school All-American out of DeMatha High School. Don't be surprised if, if Don Nealon, he has one timeout left, calls timeout to give DeArmas a little time to think about it. Dave DeArmas has a chance to win the game. His longest kick in college has gone for 33 yards, but in high school, he hit one from 52 yards away. And John, just as you had said, they're going to try to freeze Dave DeArmas. The lonely life of a kicker. <laughs>
Mark Dupner, if he can pull this out, will remember forever his first victory at Maryland. Out there in the, the middle of the, the state of the West Virginia logo, all by himself, kind of ironic, standing in the state. Well, it looks like right about Huntington. Is. Diarmas will have a wind at his back. This turned out to be one heck of a football game. I'll tell you. Maryland led by 19 points in the fourth quarter. West Virginia stormed back. They lead by one. This will be a 47-yard attempt. And one thing West Virginia cannot do is be offsides. They have to concentrate, get down their stances, concentrate solely on that football. When that thing moves, go. And I can guarantee you they are going for the block. Quarterback, this. they're going to they're gonna go for it. On fourth down and three. The guard fell out of his stance. The tackle on the left side. Steve Ingram fell backwards. <laughs> That's the craziest thing I've ever seen. Oh, that could be absolutely huge there. Watch this. Whoa! <laughs> Steve Ingram, a sophomore out of Seat Pleasant, Maryland. And ironically, Tony, their best offensive lineman. And boy, that put them in terrible shape. It was fourth and short. They wanted to pick up the first down. Fourth down and eight. Kaleo, he's got his man, but he overthrows. Badgett, West Virginia has held off the Terrapins with 12 seconds to play. West Virginia. Cause to celebrate. The Mountaineers merely have to go down on their knee. Maryland does have one timeout remaining. This is the 75th game at New Mountaineer Field, and there will certainly be an asterisk next to this one. West Virginia will go down such till penalty marker comes down on the play. The clock stands at eight. Illegal motion by the Mountaineers with eight seconds to play. And you have to be happy for this young guy, number oh. 14. You've got to say this. He has been much maligned throughout his career. Jake Keltzner went out with an injury. Studstill has been on since the start of the second half, and Darren Studstill is responsible more than any other player on this Illegal team motion for this victory. On the offense, penalty is declined. The second down. And you know what, Tony? Like you see in professional football with the quarterback controversy, this young guy never said a word, went out, worked hard every day, accepted his role, and he comes in and wins the football game. The clock starts, it winds down, and that is it. The West Virginia Mountaineers have rallied from a 19-point fourth quarter deficit. Darren Studstill goes down to one knee to give thanks, and the Mountaineers have one of their most memorable victories in years. West Virginia 34, Maryland 33. John and I will return. <laughs>